now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, Bride of Dragon. The Goddess Next Door and John Haynes team up to take on the dark vampire in this action-packed Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Bride of Dracula in paperback and e-readers at online booksellers today. When I think about the last two decades and the enduring popularity of superheroes in media such as film, television, and licensed merchandising such as t-shirts, action figures, and video games, I lament the missed opportunity by comic book publishers to capitalize on that popularity to reach a new generation of readers. When superhero movies at an all-time high in popularity and superhero merchandise at an all-time high, comic book sales are at an all-time low. And the reason why comic book sales are at an all-time low is because the industry is just not in a place where it's ready to compete for the audience of new readers or to reach the audience of new readers. And the damage that was done back in the 1990s has impeded the ability of the comic book industry to grow. In fact, it has led to the industry literally being on the brink of collapse. And the laying of that foundation was way back in the 1990s when Marvel decided to buy Heroes World. Now, when Marvel bought Heroes World, they wanted to get into the distribution business. Unfortunately, when they bought Heroes World, that led to several other distributors winding up going out of business, and that led to only Diamond being the only distributor for comic books. And when Diamond became a monopoly, that literally choked the life out of the comic book industry and prevented it from being able to compete with other forms of media. With the Diamond monopoly, comic books were restricted to being only sold in comic book stores because mainstream retailers require that products be returnable and Diamond insists that comic books remain non-returnable and because comic books are not returnable this is why supermarkets don't stock comic books uh, grocery stores don't stock comic books and chains like Rite Aid and other drug stores don't stock comic books because when it comes down to mainstream retail, it works like this. They need products to be returnable for store credit on next month's publications, or they have no incentive to stock those publications. And once the distribution wound up in Diamond's hands and it became non-returnable, the only place you could buy a comic book was a comic shop. And that limited the ability of the comic book industry to grow and capitalize on the popularity of these characters as film studios began adapting these characters for the silver screen. When they started adapting these characters again in films like 98's Blade, 2000's X-Men, and 2002's Spider-Man, they had no way of being able to synergize comic sales with the merchandising of these films because comics were limited to the comic shop. Now they could get some trade paperbacks to places like Barnes and Noble and Amazon, but again, that was online retail and online retail wasn't as strong back in 2002 and still is not really as strong as it would be if comics were distributed all over in other retail venues. And the thing that's holding it back is the archaic, obsolete distribution system of Diamond and Diamond's non-returnable policy, because Diamond's non-returnable policy does not, again, give retailers incentive to stock comic books. Now, the other thing that has led to a missed opportunity in comic books is that we had comic publishers who did not know how to synergize their character storylines with the release of these movies. When I take a look at Marvel's editorial at the time of your Joe Casadas and to your Dan Didos at DC, they really did, weren't really focused on synergizing their comic products with the release of these films in order to reach the larger audience of casual readers. Most of them were focused on the comic audiences that they had, but not trying to expand to reach new audiences through synergizing the release of comic storylines with these movies. I look at Marvel and they really they dropped a lot of balls as related to reaching new readers that were in that were looking to go to the comic shop to discover these characters and when I think about 
the missed opportunities I think about during the time of Spider-Man coming out in 2002, we had them talking about things like, I think it was the brand new day or one new day, something like that. It might have been during the, not the first one, but maybe the second or the third one. And that was where they dissolved Peter and Mary Jane's marriage. And that really was something they shouldn't have done because you got people come, born, come into the comic shop, they want to learn about Spider-Man, but they're not seeing any product on the shelf that's accessible to them. Just like with the whole Batman, you had the Dark Knight trilogy coming out, no product on the shelf that's accessible to the reader. And in 2008, we had Iron Man come out, no product that led to the character being accessible to the shelf. And with all the constant reboots that were coming up, like the reboots of several titles in 2002, like the New Avengers and all these other first wave reboots under Joe Quesada, Marvel was not in a place to really compete and reach those new readers just as the first couple of films were coming to the theater. And when the Marvel Cinematic Universe started to roll out, we really started to see serious problems because Marvel's publishing division was going through another reboot. And that's not a place where they were ready to access the new customer. The new customer was struggling, would struggle to come in and find these characters. And then as, just as they're starting to get to know the characters, we get another reboot. And that was, that was another thing that wound up tripping up comic publishers and preventing them from being able to capitalize on the opportunity to get new readers. When I look at the comic book industry, they just, they weren't not, again, in a place where they're ready to compete to reach those new readers. The new readers were at were coming out of the theater excited and ready to go read comics, but they wound up getting tripped up because one, they could not find comics in any place but a comic book store. And then two, when they got to the comic book store, most of the titles did some in some cases were rebooted and they had to try to figure out how the continuity worked. And then three, we had the comic book publishers not really focusing on synergizing the products through a marketing campaign to get people into comics. Now, when I look at the recent things transpiring as related to Marvel Comics, I really see where they have really completely blown the opportunity. I mean, the latest reboot in 2015 was a complete disaster when you look at it as an opportunity to reach new readers. Again, we had Captain America Civil War come out, and it was one of the strongest superhero movies to date. And people came to the comic shop looking for a Steve Rogers Captain America book. And instead of them seeing a Steve Rogers Captain America book, they saw Sam Wilson in the Captain America book. And Sam Wilson, who they saw on screen, was the Falcon, and that confused them. Then they would go to the comic shop looking to see for a Tony Stark Iron Man book. And we have Riri Williams in the Iron Man book. And that confused them. And again, these were all opportunities missed because comic publishers just were not in a place to compete. And when I look at the DC side, they dropped the ball as well because they had a Wonder Woman movie come out. And the book, again, was not in a place where it was able to synergize because we had this New 52 a couple of years ago. And then we have this rebirth going on. And again, not in a place where it was ready to synergize for competition. And the big problem with the comic book industry is, is that they, are ju they just have not been in a place where they've been competitive as publishers. A competitive publisher would be thinking about making sure that their products were accessible to the new reader and making sure that their comics were ready to reach new readers. When I look at 1989 when I was in high school and the release of the uh, Tim Burton's Batman, DC Comics was in a way better place competitively. And because they were able to synergize the Batman comic with the other Batman merchandise, they were able to sell more Batman comics and increase his visibility with a new generation of readers. And that's what led to the Batman character becoming an American icon for the next generation and enduring in popularity because DC was able to synergize Batman in 89 with the merchandising, with the licensing, with the action figures, and with the comic books, 
and because those comics were in places like grocery stores, candy stores, drug stores, people were able to find Batman, discover Batman, and discover Batman comics, and that was what led to the expansion of the Batman franchise to the point where they were able to publish books not only featuring Batman and Batman and Detective Comics, but also published books with Robin and Nightwing and even spin-off things like Young Justice because all of those came out of the Batman brand because they were able to synergize and reach those new readers. And as those new readers came in, they began to discover other books in the DC Universe. But I have not seen any sort of business strategy towards reaching new readers. And that's really sad because here you have superheroes at the height of their popularity, making billions of dollars at the box office and making billions of dollars in merchandise sales on video games, action figures, and other merchandise. But the product that laid the foundation for their popularity, in most cases, can't even get 30,000 orders or 40,000 orders, and the most popular character, Batman, barely gets 100,000 orders, and he probably sells more than that in one single action figure from Mattel in a Toys R Us. But he can't sell that many comic books because the industry just isn't in the right place, and it doesn't have the right people in place to lay down a vision for allowing the industry to set a new direction for the 21st century. When I take a look at the comic book industry, they have not been competitive since the late 20th century, and they continue to tumble, stumble and bumble in the 21st century, and all we have to do is take a look at the Comicron orders to see how bad things are as related to the comic book industry and the opportunity that has been missed over the last two decades to reach an entire generation of new readers. We have all these programs out here in addition to these movies, such as these animated programs like the Teen Titans cartoon that came out in the early 2000s, the Legions of Superheroes, the Batman, all these cartoons were getting us a whole new generation of fans along with these movies, but the comic book industry was just not in a place to compete, and because it wasn't in a place to compete, they wound up missing an opportunity to get a whole new generation of readers and have a whole new generation of fans who would be out here ready to buy comics, but because no one in editorial at your Marvels, your DCs, your Image, your Archies, none of them were ready to reach those new readers, they weren't in a place to capitalize on that opportunity to turn their industry completely around and go from 40,000 orders to 400,000 sales. If you'd like to see me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon by clicking the link in the description box. And if you want to try some of my SJS Direct publications like the ISIS series, the e Steam series, the Temptation of John Haynes, or the Spinsterella Trilogy, you may do so by clicking the link to Amazon.com. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, e Steam Essential. Devil's Depot, which is a turning point in our life, the most powerful Steam series story. It's Steam Ascension at online booksellers today.